Hi, I'm Kevin Mullen, and this is One on One. My guest on this edition of One on One is San Mateo County Supervisor Carol Groom. Carol, thank you very much for joining us on One on One. And you're here today to talk to us about something called Streets Alive San Mateo County. So can you give us a little bit of the history of the Streets Alive San Mateo County program and, and what it's all about? I'd be delighted to. Thanks for asking me to come this morning. Uh, Streets Alive is really started last year um, when I held a conference on healthy families and parks. Um, we have an obesity crisis in this county. Uh, we have a problem with families getting out and, and getting family exercise and making sure they eat right. And so I thought that we, we did a conference on parks are free, families are right now in our, in our sort of down economic times. What a better place to go out and have family exercise. And our guest was Gil Panalosa, who is a former park and rec director in Bogota and is now the head of an international not-for-profit called World Health Day. And he suggested to us that we do something community-wide in, in addition to our conference. And so we came up with Streets Alive, which is every city that wants to participate will uh, either close a park, close a street, close a neighborhood, um, and create a, create a uh, to four-hour event where with the goals of build, getting to know your neighbor a little bit, talking about health and education, talking about physical fitness, and hopefully having lots of fun. So this, this open street movement really is a, a global kind it of a, a thing. It is a global and, thing. And you're bringing it here to, to San Mateo County. So whenever you do this kind of a thing, um, you may be talking about different jurisdictions, lots of different entities that are mm -hmm. involved when, you, when, when you're closing thoroughfares right. and so forth. So tell us a little bit about um, the partners that you're working with sure. to get this movement uh, up off the ground. Sure. Our health department is helping us lead it, the San Mateo County Health Department. Um, we have Wells Fargo Bank, Recology, both the Sequoia and Peninsula Healthcare Districts. We have the Hospital Consortium, which is uh, composed of Kaiser and Seton and Mills Peninsula and Sequoia. We have Samtrans and we have the Silicon, Bike, Silicon Valley Bike Coalition. Great, lots of folks. So we've got a lot of folks. Each, each has a different viewpoint, a different slant. Uh, then we're also working with the cities. Then we're working with the cities from their public work de department, their park and rec department, and individual council people. All right. So uh, we're looking at April 11th as uh, kind of a, a coalescing day here. So um, what will people expect to see in their communities on April 11th? And uh, how does one do a Streets Alive kind okay. of a thing? Um, every city's taken kind of a different look at things. The uh, last thing we wanted to be do as the planning committee was be uh, sort of prescriptive. So uh, Belmont is having a bike race and they're going to end at Twin Pines with the mayor um, be leading the bike race. Um, Millbrae, for instance, is going to do a history walk through downtown starting at the History Society and, and taking a, a walk. San Mateo is going to do something either at Central Park or the Shoreline Park and it will be kid or, kids or children oriented. Um, Redwood City is going to do something in Redwood Square and they will close the street. Brisbane is going to close uh, a street. East Palo Alto is going to close the street. And in that there will be communi just community organizations and families. Uh, the hospitals between Kaiser, Sequoia and Mills Peninsula will be pro and uh, Seton will be providing education at some of these locations so that whether it's health education or nutrition education or maybe taking some blood pressure screenings. So everybody's just a little bit different. Right. And it'll be from uh, 11, uh, 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. So some might wonder why cities um, wouldn't just encourage residents to get active on local parks, uh, in local parks and on trails, those kinds of things. But well, what is the, the key reason really for opening streets to people? And, and whenever you do that, though, you have some associated safety concerns you and, and um, uh, you know, managing it properly. Well, so I, I think that. we're not closing more than one block at a time. And uh, again, the idea is sort of a little bit of community building, a little bit of being outdoors, a little bit of getting to know your neighbor, and kind of just, it's kind of fun to be on a street that's closed. Um, and you know, Redwood City does this all the time. Um, San Mateo does it two or three times a year. Foster City does it all the time over at Leo Ryan Park and the whole area around it. And um, everybody comes back and says, you know, it's just kind of fun to walk in the street and I ran into my neighbor and um, my, my kids hadn't seen their kids in a while. So it's, 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 it, this is kind of an umbrella thing. 
Right, I know in, in my community in South San Francisco, there's been some discussion of maybe closing a section of Grand Avenue, which was really more of a business kind of thing. Let's, let's get people exposed to the businesses right. in the downtown, for example, but there really is potentially an associated health benefit, and you mentioned the community building yes. piece. That, that really is central to all I th this. I think idea. it is. When people I think see the is. neighbors, they come out of their house, yes. they're, they're sharing yes. an experience together. And, you know, in South San Francisco, you have that beautiful new Centennial Walkway, and, uh, which is just a glorious gift, I think, to the community. Right. And, and that's the other thing we're hoping is that there'll be some um, a taking a look at in, in the future of planning so that we have more friendly pedestrian, more friendly bicycle places in each of our cities. Um, the bicycle, uh, Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition has been very helpful. Um, they're going to do some bike safety things. So, uh, you know, we're just really trying to make folks understand or get folks to understand that you don't have to be in your car all the time. Right. So there is really this this larger vision that you're yeah. alluding to about pedestrian friendly communities. So t just talk a little bit more in depth, if you can, about how this ties into the county's long, longer term strategic objectives around creating healthier communities. And you mentioned the, the obesity issue, which has received lots of attention. I know there are lots of different efforts underway, but, and it's not just a, a childhood no, no, no. issue. This is a community-wide kind of a but thing. But sadly, um, your habits are formed very early. Your habits are formed very early about what kind of, what, whether you're practicing nutrition in your own home, what's going on at the school cafeteria and the school lunch program, uh, the fast food nation that we, that we live in. And um, so th hopefully that we'll, we'll do some nutrition tips and we'll get people thinking that when you, when, what, you, what, you, what you learn to eat as, as a young person is going to stay with you probably as an adult. Right. And so we'd like to talk to people, remind them that uh, one of the one of the, the, the ways to to not get a, like a diabetes is to watch your nutrition and get some exercise. Everything in moderation. Um, diabetes is one of the easiest diseases to catch early and control, but if it's not caught early, it's one of the most devastating illnesses that 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 a child or an adult can have. Right. And you mentioned uh, some of the healthcare partners that you have. Yes naturally, and you have a background I do. In, in healthcare, I do. so I know these issues are important. You talk a little bit about, and we hear so much about with this healthcare debate on the national level, but, but um, many of these things really do start, like you said, early habits, and, and do, they do play out on the local level. So talk a little bit about how this is important for the healthcare community, those healthcare partners, to have a community that really embraces this kind of, this kind of living, really. You're talking well, about a lifestyle kind of adjustment. It is, it is important, and most healthcare professionals want to begin with prevention. And most of the hospitals have strong community education departments. They have str um, strong uh, anti uh, heart programs, diabetes programs, uh, fitness programs. And um, it, one of the things that we did when we had our convention in, in, in our meeting in October is Kaiser was kind enough to donate some healthy cookbooks that one of their physicians had worked on. And so everybody who came got a nice cookbook and uh, good recipes, easy to fix, but healthy nutrition. Right. What, we just have just about a okay. minute and a half here. What, what's the biggest challenge that you face as a policymaker trying to create these kinds of pedestrian oriented communities that, that we're, we're gradually moving toward? But what, what's the biggest I, I th challenge? I think it's two things, change and our love of automobile. And, um, and then, you know, we, 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 we work so hard in this community to build a good transportation system, but we still have, you know, connection issues, and we still have uh, east-west east issues. We have a good north-south, but it's still, you have to get in your car to get to it. And so I, I think that, you know, in, in, when we look at long-range planning, we can be better, and, right. and we can do a better job of helping people to get out of their car. Right, so there are movements. So once again, if somebody is just tuning in, if you give us a, a quick overview about what to expect on April 11th, and then if you could just talk a, um, a little bit about um, how people can find out more information. Sure, we have about, at the moment, we have 10 or 11 cities that are um, signed up and participating. By April 11th, we hope to have a few more, but uh, we have a website, it's called streetsalivesmc.org. Uh, you can call 650-363-4092 uh, to get more details or, or to find out what your city is doing. But the website is really great. Every city is listed, all of our partners, and times, and maps of how to get there, and maps of how the, uh, 
where the city will be having their event. Very good. Streets Alive San Mateo County. My guest has been Carol Groom, San Mateo County Supervisor. This has been One on One. Thanks for watching.